welcome to Lourdes Classic Kitchen. And today in my kitchen, I'm going to be making some, well, not I, but we are going to be making some tamales. So come on in. I'm going to show you what you're going to be needing. Right here, I have some um, corn ears while well, they're tamale leaves, but I call them corn ears. <laughs> And you're gonna be needing um, some of these as well. Now all of this that I have, it's not gonna be an exact recipe because the tamales doesn't exactly have an exact recipe. Cause you can put whatever you like in the tamales. But I'm gonna be making them today, some cheese tamales like my Nana used to make them. So I have also some cream corn. And this is, I'm gonna put in the masa. And then I have about six pounds of masa, as well as hot chili peppers. These are the white ones, like huerito chilies. I have some carrots and cheese. And depending on like how much we get done, or if we have extras, I'm gonna put some chorizo beans in there. And I also have some caldo de pollo in water or some chicken stock you can use. And that's to flavor the masa. But the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take your ear husks. See them? They have like these, some of them have like these hairs in it. You're gonna wanna make sure you clean out all of your, your ear husks before you soak them. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start cleaning these out and then I'm gonna put them to soak. All right, now that I got them cleaned out, this is how they're gonna look inside, nice and clean. After that, you wanna take either like really hot water or you can even boil water if you want, but the water that comes out of our faucet is like scorching hot. It'll literally burn your hands if you put it in there. And then afterwards, after I fill up this pot, you're gonna wanna put something a little heavier on it. I usually put some like tongs in there just to hold down the leaves and let them soak. And you just want them um, pliable enough to like move them because you're gonna spread the masa on there. So now I'm just gonna finish filling this up and then I'm gonna let them soak. And while this is soaking, we're gonna go over to the table and I'm gonna show you how you're gonna wanna cut your cheese and your um, carrots. Now that we have our um, ears soaking or our corn husk soaking, I'm gonna come over here. <laughs> He's laughing, look at over here. He, my husband's laughing because we were having an argument about what are they called? Corn husk, ear husk, but they're called ojas. Ojas, there you go. <laughs> So now you're gonna take your cheese and you're gonna like come down on your cheese. And then you're gonna wanna cut it in three parts. Now, hey guys, if you want to make it two parts or if you want a bigger chunk of cheese in there, I ain't gonna judge you. Just, just go ahead and put however much cheese you want in there. But we already cut up all of these, this is how they're gonna look. See, they're not perfect. They're all different sizes. And that's how they're gonna be. But that's just an idea of how big you're gonna want them. So now I'm gonna finish cutting up this piece and then I'll show you your carrots. Now that I um, finished cutting up all my cheese with the carrots, I know guys, carrots sound, may sound like a weird combination, but this is the way my Nana always used to do it. and. I love my Nana, I miss her tamales. She said they were simple, but they were always good. She liked the cheese ones, cheese. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and, depending on your size of your carrot, you're gonna even wanna make it like maybe thirds or in half. And then you're gonna take that half and cut that in half. And also cut that in either like thirds or halves. So you have pieces like that, just like the sliver of cheese because you're going to place that in there. So now I'm going to finish cutting these carrots 
and then I'll show you how I'm going to cut the chili pe peppers. It's going to be a little similar, but just try to wear gloves when doing it. Now that I finished cutting up my carrots, this is how you're going to want them to look. Just like that, in little pieces. And now I'm going to cut up these huerito chilies, or these hot little chilies. And when I was taking them out of the jar, I was thinking about how my dad used to um, just eat them with anything. They're hot, so if you can't tolerate like the heat, don't put too much of it in there. You can put any chili that you would like. But he used to um, take them and eat them with his sandwich or his burger. <laughs> So I thought of that while I was taking them out. And if you want, you can take out the seeds and scoop them out to the side so it won't be as hot. And then I cut it in half and I'm just gonna slice it. Slice them in like little pieces like that. You're gonna put a couple of these pieces in the tamale. So I'm gonna continue to finish cutting all of these chilies. Now that we got all of our condiments cut up. Don't forget to use gloves for those chilies and things like that so you don't burn your eyes later. We're gonna work on the masa right now. And as I say masa, this is the store-bought masa. We got it from Vallarta if you have that or any Mexican store should sell the masa per pound. So I'm gonna take my cans of cream style corn you want to work that in, Cody? Work it. Work that masa, Cody. You know what I'm doing. You might just need one. The... And you can eyeball it and judge it. Be the judge of it. We want a smoother masa. So I'm going to add a little more of the cream corn. And I'm going to add a little bit of my chicken broth into that as well and you're gonna want to work it in see how it gets like mushy if you want to wear gloves you can wear gloves if not use clean hands on that now guys the one thing that you should do is you should sit down with your grandparents or your family and listen to their traditions listen to their stories they're interesting if you just sit down and listen to them i miss sitting down with my nana and hearing her stories plus they like your company and they like to talk to you cherish these things because i no longer have my grandmother with me or my father so just cherish all of these memories that you make now look at guys look at how creamy this is see it yeah, creamy. Cream, cream, creamy land, dreamy like, like my Cody. No. no, but you are dreamy and creamy. Did you get all of that, Cody? Sure I see a spot there. No. And that's how you're gonna want it, like the texture. You want to show them, like a creamy texture. You see the corn through it. Yeah. And you want to taste your masa as well to see if it has enough salt. If it doesn't, add salt. Adjust it to your liking. Something I did that my Nana didn't do is put the caldo in it, which to give it some extra flavor. But um, we're just gonna go ahead and get our, um, what are they? Ojas? Ojas or corn husks. Corn husks. I'm going to go ahead and drain them out of the water and put them in a strainer and then I'm going to bring them to the table and they should be pliable to work now. Okay, now that I've taken my ears, my ojas out of the, the water that they've been soaking in, I have them in a strainer with a towel underneath because it's going to drip. But you're going to take one of your, your ojas and you're going to want to make sure they're dry of any water that's in there. Now there's two sides to anoha. You have like a rough side and a silkier side. See the rough side? And then there's gonna be a silkier side, which is smoother. 
that's the side that you're gonna wanna spread your masa on. Now I do my masa with the spoon. I just spread it back and forth. That's the easier way. You don't wanna go too high or too short on your corn husk, depending on how, um, how big they are. This is actually a really long one. If you can see the size, it's like tall. So then I'm gonna take a piece of carrot along with probably two of the little pieces of chili in here. Just make sure you don't rub your eye after that. And then I'm gonna take my piece of cheese and place it in there. And then I'm gonna wrap the tamale and then fold it upwards towards you. Now, some people don't uh, wrap their tamales, but I like to wrap them extra so it makes less of a mess. And I wrap them with these um, dry wax papers. And I've gotten these wax papers from um, Smart and Final. So if you wanna get them, they're easier because they come in pieces. When you pull it out, see, it's just like a square. So now that I have it in there, I fold it inwards and fold the two sides in towards the tamale and then I roll. And then I just set them aside like that. You can either put them in a tray or anything that you have, but make sure they're all facing the same way because you don't want to cook the tamales upside down. So now I'm going to continue um, wrapping and spreading these tamales. And then as soon as I place them in the pan, I will show you the next step. Um, some of our cheese tamales this is how they're gonna look the face is up and you can get one of these tamale pans at either a Mexican um, supermarket or sometimes they sell them at the store or if you can't find them just get a pot and you can get like a either a strainer and flip it upside down and then place it around your tamales but right now I'm gonna use my tamale pot and I'm gonna fill the inside with water and then I'm gonna close this back on. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up. Okay, now that I got it filled up, you're gonna to wanna to bring it to your stove. And then I'm gonna start placing the tamales around it, or the tamales. And you're just gonna to wanna to place them around your pan. Now I'm just gonna cook a few for today and the rest I'm gonna place in Ziploc bags with the face up again. Place them in your Ziploc bags and then they're great to freeze. That way you can pull them out when you need them. Here's how you're gonna wanna pack the tamales for the freezer, the tamales. You're gonna wanna put them face up like this for when you grab it and you're just gonna continue placing them in there until they're all in there, but you wanna make sure they're faced up because you don't wanna cook an upside down tamale. You don't want whatever you have in your tamale running down. So as you put them in here, you're also gonna wanna label them and put the date on them. So now, time for me to finish the bean tamales.
But if you want to cook some tamales, make sure you cook them and it'll take about three and a half hours or until the tamale is done and pulls away from the ear husk. So right now the uncooked tamales take about uh, probably about an hour and a half to like an hour 45, just a penny. So we're gonna go ahead and cook some of these tamales. I'm gonna put a few of the bean tamales in there. The nice thing about tamales is you can put whatever you want to in the center. Whatever you like, go ahead and put it. I mean, it doesn't have to be fancy, but I had made some of these um, chorizo beans earlier and I put I'm going to put some in the center along with some cheese that I had left over from the other one that I made and then you're just going to fold it over same way. And I've also done um, spam and cheese and chili. I mean I've done a variety of different types of tamales but this is the one that I'm just showing you today. So make it fun you guys. Go ahead and put whatever you guys like. If you guys have leftover meat that you had made. Put some meat and cheese in there. Be creative. So we're going to finish up these bean and cheese ones. I did put more masa in there. So we're spreading more. We finished the other one. So we're going to go ahead and continue to spread these. Now that we've placed all the tamales in the pan that we're going to cook. I wet this cloth. And I'm going to place it above the tamales. Just so the, they steam evenly. And then I'm going to put the lid on. And I'm going to take my heat and you want to raise your heat to a high till you hear it like boiling. Uh, once it boils, then you're going to want to lower your heat to a medium. Now that I pulled a couple out of the tamale pot, you want to let them sit for a little bit because that way the masa sets. But it's going to depend on how much um, I mean, I'm sorry, how big your tamale is, but see how when it pulls away like that, that's what you're going to want. You're going to want it to pull away from the, the corn husk. <laughs> I'm having issues with that today. So now, oh no, sorry Chris, this isn't the bean one. It's another cheese. Christian, I made the bean one for Christian. But see how it just pulled off like that? Now we're gonna cut into that. Look at that. That's bomb. That's delicious right there. For all that goodness, it's still hot, nice and steamy. Try that, Chris. I'm burning your mouth with hot. I'm burning your mouth, huh? It's so good. Hot. I know the combination of the carrot and the cheese sound weird, That's but bomb. it's so bomb right here. You guys want a bite? Mm. That was good. That's good, huh? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Laura Lee's Classic Kitchen for more of these delicious recipes. Have a blessed day and comment down below what um, tamale you like to eat during this time. I'll be seeing you soon. Bye. Me and Chris. Bye.